you know, mm -hmm. even though we haven't uploaded a little in a week, it felt like it feels like years recording now. Right. That's kind. Of, it honestly does feel. It honestly felt like we were like away for like s centuries upon centuries, and then now we're finally coming back to record record a new episode, which is weird because it's just been a week. I guess. I mean, to, I, to I, be fair. The internet a week is like ten years. That is true. That been by that logic, we're like extremely old men. <laughs> <laughs> extremely old internet men. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode ten. A very special episode of the Hackjack Show. I'm of course your your ex genuinely beautiful and ever forgetful hack. And I am your noble and loyal Jack. And today's a special episode because we ain't, ain't cover any news topic that has accrued uh, this, pa this past week or last week. No, this episode is dedicated all to the greatness and gloriousness that is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Now, this, this brought this upon up because... Be because until recently, Jack what well, did not share my did, did not share my intense my intense uh, fascination with the show and and franchise. He was aware about it for many years, ever since our high school days. But you know, but only knew it through just memes and whatnot. But that changed until, well, let's say, a couple months ago. Until I saw it on Netflix, pretty much, like it came out. There. Yes, so so pretty much when it was available to him like a normie, that he decided to give the show a legit chance and see what was behind the memes. He wanted to look behind what 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 is this all JoJo is about. And from episode one, I'm glad to say, ladies and gentlemen, he was hooked on, and as of now. He is currently, as I as I report, currently uh, going through part four of the of of the series in the anime. Yeah, now, that's how much I've been on it. Mm-hmm. And and now, knowing knowing Jack, he is going to be. He's going to get ahead of me pretty pretty soon because the part our anime has just finished, and. I would like to actually read part five first, but unfortunately, it's not available in this country or in English, officially. And the last time I tried re tried, re tried reading it through scanlations, through legal, through um legitimate means, I should say. Um, I wasn't feeling it, and I and I think I kind of just burned myself a little because at that point, I fi I finished reading part four. And I was not ready for the insane is that was part five. So I kind of, so I kind of um, gave myself too much JoJo at that time. But now I am now fresh and clean. I got it all in my system like steroids. And <laughs> and once Jack tells me that he, that he's finally gonna be watching part five, then that's where I will begin, and we'll see from there. Yep. So I guess the first. To first start off, before we just dive deep into all the hilarious and the craziness that is JoJo, the question uh, the question is would be how we got introduced to JoJo. Now I did a lot. Now I did elaborate a little bit of Jack's side of, side of the story. So so, so but I want him to t tell it in, in his own words. So Jack, tell me, uh, what what. Oh, what's that? Was that? Was that big? Where's that big five dollar working? Looking for? Ah, that's right. What, drew, what drew you in? What drew you in to give JoJo a chance in the first place, even after all the crazy memes you've seen and whatnot? All right. So, uh, first of all, excuse me for the background. Something's happening. I don't know water. But anyways, so I always wanted to give JoJo a meme. Uh, a meme. <laughs> I always wanted to give JoJo a chance. It's just that uh, usually during my time on the internet, I would have bookmarks upon bookmarks of things I would 
be like, oh, I'm going to watch it later, and I just totally forget about it. But the way you described it, especially in high school, JoJo, I was already interested just because of the way you <laughs> dramatically posed and like try to replicate every single pose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm so glad no one took pictures of that. <laughs> I should have. Post them online. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Jack, J Jack, J Jack just got 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 me got me docs right there. <laughs> but pretty much, I did wanted to give it a chance. It's just that the first time, technically, this is my second time trying to give it a chance, and this one succeeded. The first, the only reason why the first one didn't succeed was because I truly just got lost in what episode to start in. Because yep, it, the website I was looking at made made like it made it look weirdly like the the titles because it didn't specify part one, part two. So when I clicked on an episode, it was literally oh no, it could have been YouTube. I clicked on episode one, saw it. I'm like okay. And then I clicked episode two or something that I thought was two. And I was literally at the part where Jonathan Joestar was being taught the Haman. And I think that's one of the big reasons why it's kind of make it's kind of hard for people to go into JoJo. It's kind of like comic books. You just don't know where to begin. But unlike comic books, ladies and gentlemen, there's actually a set beginning for JoJo. And this goes for people who want to read the manga and and or want to watch the anime. The best place to start off is the absolute beginning in JoJo Bizarre Adventure Part One: Phantom Blood. Now, for now, before we go into talking about Phantom Blood, and go to my side of the story. So, I was introduced to JoJo through a YouTube ch through a YouTube channel that I used to that that I used that I used to subscribe that I, I was subscribed to for many years, especially during my high school years. Um, it was through the YouTube channel Super Best Friends Play. Oh, and I would and I would regularly l listen to their podcast and it was through their podcast that I was in introduced to JoJo. Now and just like Jack, I would hear about it and I would honestly not know what the heck they were talking about, but I was still fascinated nonetheless. So, around I say around this time it will be twenty oof, twenty fifteen yeah twenty fifteen I want to say around the, around this time I decided to give JoJo to give JoJo a chance when I used again used to subscribe to Crunchyroll and this is around the time when I believe the first half of Stardust Crusaders was about to wrap up before the second half yeah. And so I pretty much binge all of part one and part two, and finished what I could of what was available for for start for part three. And then going to I dive in more because I fell so in love with the series. I then started to get the official Viz Media, Viz Media um, mang mangas here here in the U.S. I have a total of five of them at the moment, hoping to increase them more. And by the way, Jack, these are like the best like mangas I've ever seen. Not, and I'm not saying that because I'm being a JoJo fanboy. Like literally, these are hard co hard covered n and nicely re nicely redesigned um, ma mangas just just for the just for the re just for re releases. Like if you like if you weren't paying attention to what it said, it could look like an actual it looks like an actual book. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. And as well, the uh, creator of JoJo, Araki, he he actually does redesigns of all the of the characters he's made over the years, and he redesigns them in his current art style. Mm -hmm. Oh. So that's yes, yeah, so that's that's the covers, not the actual manga itself, but just the covers, and and it's very fascinating because I hold in my in my hand the first volume of JoJo's. Bizarre Adventure, very first volume, and I see this nice-looking Jonathan 
Jonathan Joestar. Maybe a bit too big on the lips, but he looks, but he looks like a well fine young man. I go, I go to the, I go to the, I go to the manga, freaking Mr. Big Burly Man, <laughs> with <laughs> one, like shoulder, like I kid you not, on the panel I'm looking at right now, this is like the boxing match between uh, Joe, Jonathan and Dio. I'm looking at a panel. You got the. Sh- the muscle that's supposed to be the shoulder, plus the mm-hmm. um, what's after what's after the shoulder? After the shoulder, the um, supposed to be um, the elbow. Oh, no, 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 no! There's a muscle before the elbow. The traps. There, the traps, and then there's a muscle in the elbow, and then there's like looks, and then freaking the actual arm, its forearm itself has its own muscle. <laughs> then we reach the hand, which looks pretty small. And <laughs> when I was watching throughout the whole thing, I'm like, what kind of, what kind of nutritionist do they have, and and like what kind of regimen do they always do to have these big muscles? Jesus Christ. And it gets even insane when Jonathan gets older. Like you, you remember remember the moment where he's uh, doing the the rugby game. Yeah. <laughs> like my God, my God, and and it is and it's so weird to and it's so weird to see because it's just it shows some and it's so weird to see because this was pretty much what. Shonen characters look like uh, when the original manga was was made, so like mid mid to late eighties, and and the heroes and the villains were all these buffed up buffed up dudes, regardless of how old they were. I, um, I mean, remember, Joe Turo was seventeen. <laughs> yeah. And Stardust Crusaders, and he looks like that. <laughs> seventeen. Heck. I think Jonathan's even, even more. I think Jonathan's even more, even more muscled up than his uh, descent descendants at the same age. Oh. So, and then, of course, that changes over time because because Araki got better at drawing, and so now all his characters <laughs> look reasonably normal. Wait, wait. <laughs> You're saying a chiseled man with like the with tree trunks of legs. And arms is not good drawing. You're saying what he did now is better. I think the old one was better. I'm not gonna lie. I prefer <laughs> the old style, but uh, I'm, more, I'm more like in line of part three, where he actually got better in autonomy. Oh yeah. But yeah. he still got the muscle. Def- uh, you guys still got the muscle going now. It's part four and onwards, from what I've seen, is like. Like all of the testosterone just left JoJo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> especially, especially after, especially when you look at, um, the main JoJo for for part eight. You ever looked that up? No, but I want to keep it a, a secret to myself, really. Uh, I, I I would just go ahead because if you're gonna wait for like an anime adaptation, that's gonna be like years from now. And that and that manga is still going on, so who knows when it'll be actually finished? That's never finished. The JoJo family will always have a curse of some sort. Well, well, I mean, well by part eight, I mean, <laughs> who knows when part eight will actually finish? Well, hey, at least they still have the the weirdest poses I've ever seen. Yep, and and everyone has very colorful lips. Hey, Although they want. Let everyone have them luscious lips. Mm-hmm. Although I think one issue I find with this modern style is that everyone kind of has like the same face. Yeah, I'm looking at the pictures now. I can see that. Uh, and I'm and in the redesigned covers for the mangas I have, I kid you not. On the second second volume for Battle Tendency, it shows Lisa Lisa. Mm-hmm. And Lisa Lisa's face looks like Jonathan's. Wait, let me see. I'm gonna look it up. Lisa Lisa. Yeah, so you have to you have to go with the manga cover for volume two of Battle Tendency. Oh, yeah, you're right. So some drawbacks for his new style. 
but nonetheless, still the great JoJo. Now, to to now to dive deep into part one. Oh, dive into part one. Now, I've I have stated before that part one has my favorite JoJo of all of all time of all time. And now, Jack, I want to ask you because you because I remember once you did um start watching the show regularly that you that you really like that you really did like Jonathan now is that still the same or has uh Joseph Jotaro or Josuke kind of stolen uh kind of uh have they kind of uh take, taken away uh Jonathan's sta- status in your opinion no i would say Jonathan is still pretty much the best jojo i mean the man i mean the man himself was a true gentleman, mm-hmm. and like the way he, the way he, it ended off was, I don't know, very fitting for his his type of character. Yep, yeah, it, it very very much very much indeed, and of course we won't spoil it, unless we, we won't spoil it because we want people to actually get into it. But let's just say it's a very heroic ending indeed. Now, of course. We'll go on. We'll go on into parts now. One thing I like to kind always liked about Jonathan within Phantom Blood was that I, what was that he I don't I don't know how to, I don't know how to describe this. If I have to look at it very critically, like I'm an art, like I'm a honest to god critic. Mm-hmm. He kind of, he kind of, not kind of. He has the similar situations that Superman goes through in terms of characterization, where there's not much to him as far as character flaws. Mm-hmm. He still has them. Uh, he he still ha- he still has flaws in that he is sometimes a little naive. Yeah. And. And, and and as well because of his stubbornness to always do good, it it hind, it also hinders him in the few times in the story, like um, like oh like when like in his um, in his fight against oh who are those two knights oh, that Dio resurrected? It was like Rupert oh. and so I forgot the other guy's you, name. Blueford and Straits? Straits? No, oh, that's the... Blueford. And... Tarkus. Ah, sorry. Blueford and Tarkus. Blueford. It... Oh, it's a... Ah, it's like Blueford. Blue. So, th- so it does highlight, at least in that fight, how, like, how, uh, of that flaw of Jonathan, of Jonathan, but for some, for some people, it's gonna be like, oh, wait, so his flaw is that he's too nice or he's too good. That's not a flaw. It's a flaw, people get over it. It's a real flaw. But regardless, that's kind of like what I like about Jonathan is that for being the first JoJo, he's the one that's by far like the most upright and moral. So therefore, it you like to see him persevere against, against their main antagonist who... What's his name, Jack? Dio. Oh, that's not how you... You can't say it wait, like wait, that. Wait, 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 wait. So... Uh, I was just uh, typing in Bruford to find out what was the other guy's name in Tarkus, and I was looking up images. And I'm scrolling down the images, and this is what it said. I saw one where it's literally the picture. It's like, you expected pictures of Tarkus and Bruford, but it was me, Dio! God dang it. (laughs) (laughs) And with that transition, let's talk about Dio. Because... Cause that's, I'm pretty much that's all I can really say about about jo- about Jonathan, and and that's not a slight against him. Remember, folks, you don't need to have some sort of deep character to have a good character. Jonathan, he pl- he plays the 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 trope of the set ba- basically uh, basically the the aspirational hero very well, which and it makes a good contrast when we then finally get to Dio now. Jack, I want to ask you. Mm-hmm. I want to ask you this: How did you feel when D- when um, 
when when Dio uh, first arrived on uh, in the Joe Star Manor. He was so arrogant and like you, you could tell he they, <laughs> he created the character to be unlikable. Uh, like there was no redeeming qualities of, for this character in the sense of you like him because he's a good guy or he has a a, a soft heart in, in some way. He was created because. His whole thing was him being arrogant and evil, had evil intentions. At least to me. Actually, I can I, actually I can confirm that. So in the manga that I have, there's actually some like um, some of his comments that um, that Araki uh, wrote wrote down and thinking and looking back at his work, mm-hmm. and he had ones on Dio, mm-hmm. and this is. And this is what he says about Dio. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Oh, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. So what I'm about to read, he he was briefly talking about Jonathan. So here, there are limitations on how I could write a character because he was a symbol of justice. So maybe a little on the boring side. I solidified his character as I went. Jonathan is passive, reacting to Dio's various attacks, and this leads to him discovering his way of life. Perhaps this is linked to me as an author, growing along with my character as I drew him, just as Jonathan was un- unsh- unsure as to how to live his life. I was, unsh- I was unsure as to where to take the character. Maybe I grew as an author a little with Jonathan as he trudged on through his hardships. Then he goes on to, then he goes on to say... <clears throat> In part one, during the seven years after Danny's death, Jonathan gets very muscular. This change was in mind with the upcoming battle between him and Dio in mind. I thought that his physique needed to be able to withstand the constant onslaught from this point on. In addition, when this part was originally being serialized, it was an era of of muscles on the silver screen. Guys like Schwarzenegger and Stallone. Schwarzenegger, for example, can can never be stopped by any amount of gunfire, right? I wanted Jonathan to have a similar look to him, a look of unstoppables, and so, and so, pretty much. While he doesn't talk about mentions Dio very, um, doesn't go into depth about Dio, it does show that pretty much that for the very first part, he created those two characters to be the extreme opposites of each other, and to me, that's why for part one, it works so well. Because there's because unlike with part two, part three, and especially part four and later on, there is there is a clear distinction of who you want to root for and who you want to see get punched in the face really bad. Yeah. And he and he does and he goes on that journey so well that that it's a good foundation to then start off with the next future JoJo's. Now. Now, also, now, also, want to say about Dio. When I first saw Dio, oh my God, just I honestly couldn't believe a character like him existed. I thought I knew villains. Oh yeah. Until, until Dio, until I saw Dio, I'm like, oh my God. So here's an example of how truly evil Dio is. Okay, let's first go with the first time we see him joining the manor like getting into like literally leaving the cart and walking towards the steps of the manor he walks towards this at least this is from the anime's perspective not sure if they're they had this or it was just a abrupt thing in the manga but in the anime he literally it comes out of the cart joseph is kind of oh sorry jonathan is kind of wondering why this person's here and he kind of looks at him saying he looks kind of evil or mean uh, he goes over to say hi the dog starts because the dog is very friendly to everyone it starts running towards dio without any without sensing evil intent and dio literally just kicks the dog right in the mouth like not even a soft kick it was a hard kick to where the dog was I'm lo- stunned i'm looking at the panel right now and look, here is Dio's thoughts from the manga after he kicks, kicks um, 
Jonathan's dog, and he goes into this fighting stance. So this is the Joe Star heir, the only son, Jojo. I will psychologically torture him to the brink, then I, Dio, will take his place as the heir to the Joe Star estate. <laughs> That's his literal thoughts after meeting Jonathan. Yeah, he was just there because he <laughs> he thought he deserved more because of his father stuff. But the way he goes by it, it goes about it was just downright wrong. And if you think that's not the worst part, should we well, should we talk about the the other dog situation? No, no, no. That's a gut wrenching moment for the story. Well, I'll just I'll just say this: that uh, if you are a dog lover, be prepared, to ready your heart. That's all I could say. Ready your heart. So, so right from the get-go, Dio is just out there just to get rid of Jonathan. And he hurts his dog. He tries to he tries to uh, pretty much take take away his role in the family because it also shows that that Jonathan, especially as a kid, he's a, a bit bit of a spoiled brat with having no manners and and his father gained after him while Dio is the more uh, a sophisticated child who knows how to act properly within society and so so with that going on and then pretty much Dio humiliating Jonathan every single turn he goes it gets it's such refreshing where you get to their first real fight that oh, let's see, let me go let me go to it right now the girls in the first real fight which which went which happens right after when Dio does his famous you thought it was uh Jonathan but it was it was ideal line the very first fight it was like this is how I imagine kids think to each other when they're fighting <laughs> and in the sense that it was like a brutal fight people are hitting each other really hard there's blood there, there is blood being splattered. And this is just between two teenagers, not even grown up yet. Dio's about to shank Jonathan at the last, almost at the last minute. And all I can imagine is that, imagine that. Now imagine what a real, like, a fight between high schoolers is actually like. <laughs> windmill arms. Windmill arms. <laughs> all the time with the windmill arms. God dang. No one can throw a straight punch. That to me is like, that that's about fighting personified with it within Jojo. Where where in reality it'd probably be some like some dumb squabble in Jojo. Nah, it's a freaking fight to the death, man. Okay, now 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 on the go on the on the on to close a few more thoughts on part one. Number uh, I wanna ask uh Jack this. Zeppeli, what'd you think of Zeppeli? What's Zeppeli? I yes, I love him. I know he was an awesome character, <laughs> but it, it was just so sad. To to me, he's right up there with best mentor characters. Right up there with Obi Wan Kenobi. From, he's he, right up there with me. He was me. pretty much like Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> I mean, he played the role, and as well, I just also love like. Especially when you watch JoJo, just the random in- in- English he will he will put he will say from time to time. <laughs> what did he say to like to Dio when he first saw him? It was like like hello baby or something like hello, that. Hello baby. <laughs> I can't oh, I can't replicate it, but he did say something in English, you know. Mhm. Uh, let's see. I'm, okay now. And so, Zeppeli is a really good mentor, mentor character. That's really all I need to know about him. He's also a bit on the weird side, but he's Italian. That's kind of expected. <laughs> now, what'd you think of Speed of uh, Speedwagon? Like I told of you this before. Street. I told you this before with Speedwagon. His character needed. I for for me, I felt like he needed more. He he should have provided more, a little bit more on on the fight scenes. Like, he was literally just in the back commentating everything after meeting with Jonathan. Yeah, I, I'm inclined to agree. As much as I love Speedwagon, I'm more in love with the fact that of how he, of how he is rather than, rather than what he actually contributes to the story. Like, 
because literally, because he's he, he's literally a no name goon that Jonathan meets, but because of Jonathan's literal uh, manliness and and gentlemanness, Spiegel is like, I'm gonna follow this guy. I'm gonna follow him. Like seriously, this man. They could have done so much to his character in a sense of fight. This man had a bladed hat. Like like how you ha like most people can tell from Mortal Kombat where they got that guy with the bladed hat, he could just throw his hat and there's blades on it. Like But nope, he's nope, all he's relegated to is exposition and um reaction shots. <laughs> Like, damn, that was, like, a lot of lost potential for him to... Like, I would have loved seeing him throw the hat and it curves around the person or some weird thing he, like, starts explaining, oh, this is a sec secret technique that I know. It'll wrap around your body until you get sliced in half. Something like that. Maybe give me something, man. Now... Now, now let's move on. Now, what do you think of the actual, like, the the fights that happen within the show, do you do you th do you think they're good for what they are? Because I do know, so animation wise, from what I recall, they could have been a lot more better. Com at least in my opinion, compared to the other fights for the future JoJo's, it is lacking. But for what it is, for how it started off, I think it was pretty good. I wouldn't say perfect, but it was pretty good. I do like the the kind of the martial arts, the uh, what was it? the uh, Haman. I always did, I always did like them that uh, that type of style where you could just do cr crazy stuff because of the way you breathe. <laughs> oh yeah, like that makes sense. Yeah, just because of my breathing, I can connect all these leaves together to make a glider. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Or um, because of my breathing, I can, uh, I I can uh, punch the frog, but it actually splits the rock that the frog was on. Because of my breathing, I can potentially become an earthbender. Because of my breathing, I can walk on water like Jesus. <laughs> I could be a waterbender then. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and a freaking and a freaking firebender too with with uh, uh Jonathan's um final fight with Dio. <laughs> Jonathan confirmed Don't... as the avatar. <laughs> there was some oddities in the show, like okay, so remember when um Zeppeli's uh teacher and his students come to join uh Jonathan and and Zeppeli, mm -hmm. like literally at the last minute. And one of the students, like, literally goes up and he tries to do this weird jumping technique. Oh, yeah. And it was so odd. Dio just literally, like, with his fingers, he pushes the guy's mix, legs apart, makes him spread eagle. Mm -hmm. And it and, and, that, and the guy was like, ha, he fell into my trap. Now I can do my actual attack. And then he dies. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, what was your plan going into this? <laughs> yeah. Like, I was expecting a little bit more from that guy. I was just like, huh. Well, there goes that character. Yeah. Yeah, there's... Yeah. There is there is definitely some things that are lagging, especially in terms of the side characters. But as far as main, main characters and side characters, the uh, part one does really well. And as well, the fights, I will warn people... If you're not, if you don't like graphic violence, then JoJo is not for you. Because from the get go, that is a violent is a violent show. Like we're talking 90, 90s anime violent. Yeah. So if you ain't into that, whoop, sorry, it's just gonna get worse from here on then. <laughs> All right. And then that's another with part one. Now we go on to part two with battle tendency. So. So Jack, I wanna I wanna ask this but with part two. Mm -hmm. uh, f first off, thoughts on Jonathan Joestar. You mean Joseph? You are absolutely correct. Thoughts on Joseph Joestar. That's how much I love Jonathan. He's the first Jojo <laughs> I think of. Thoughts of Joe on Joseph. Uh his young self is I uh, I don't know. It was very I like him for who he is. He's very funny. To me he's very funny. 
the fights themselves were very interesting to watch, especially when we get more in depth with Haman itself. Pretty, it, I think I think at this point, Iraqi just pretty much did away with the rules of what Haman actually did, and he just <laughs> just kept doing random crap with it. Hey, it worked. But it did work. I, I will give him that it did work. I do like Jonathan. Dang it, Joseph's introduction, in which um he's helping out uh smoke helping out Smokey uh, gain out of trouble with the cops. Yeah. I said that's actually out of any kind of like character introductions that will always be my favorite, just because of how much it able to blend kind of his coolness factor, and with the silliness and his silliness. And factor. I might this might not be intentional, but keep in mind, uh, for those of you that don't know, Joseph Joestar, this part and this part he's pretty much he lives and was born in America during the what was it? 1920s? Uh, 1930s. 1930s. Yeah, because the Nazis are already um, are already uh, in control of Germany at, the, at this point. Yeah. So, uh, first of all, let me just say this one, just because it, it, I think it adds into the character, to the sense of Joseph does not care who you are. You'll pretty much be either your friend or your foe, depending on how you act around him. Because Smokey, the character itself, is black, and you can tell from the get-go some of the characters, especially the cops that were trying to arrest him, were very racist towards Smokey. I mean, it's the 1930s, and it's, it, it was expected. But Joseph, it's, Joseph himself, the man, he was he's still a gentleman in some sorts in the sense that he does not care. If he sees someone being... Uh, bullied or wrongfully smacked around like that, he will go over there and protect him. Protect him. Mm-hmm. Just like he did to that. Um, didn't he like crash over to a dinner party? No, no. He was eating dinner with his um uh, grandmother, with uh, and he ended up uh, hurting up, breaking some mafioso mafioso's finger or something. Yeah, I think it was the actual mafia, like the actual leader. I think it was the, oh, I, the the boss, the Godfather. Oh, that's right. That's right. It was um. I just found the panel right now. It was um. It was the man that was for, well, was forced that was extorting Smokey, and so pretty much Jonathan goes to him, punches him in his stomach, and and sends him flying across the room, and his grandmother, and and his and his grandmother is like. That would that would do, that would do. <laughs> like literally, she like literally, Joseph was like, "Come on, Granny, I, you know this. I, I can I can beat him. I can beat him." <laughs> Granny's like, "No, we must be respectful." The the mafioso be, ends up being super disrespectful. Grandma's like, "Beat him up." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was funny. You thought that All he right. was the Godfather or the mafioso, but no. It was the grandmother. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he was about to hit Joseph with a freaking spiked... Um... Brass knuckles. Yeah, which is like, yeesh. Yep, them studded brass knuckles. You know those things will do mm. damage. Oh, yeah. Now, now I'm going to ask this, though. How how do you feel about Caesar Zeppeli? The grandson of William Zeppeli. <laughs> oh, come on. You're giving too much away. God dang it. I mean, we gotta we, we gotta talk some. Good I know, stuff, I know. But... I know, I know, I know, I know. But... It's 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 I'm pre, it's spoilers for like a 30, 30 year old manga and like a yeah, to be and like fair, a seven year old. To be fair, this is a very <laughs> old part. We're spoiling sometimes, but yeah. All right, then I I think you know what? scratch the rule. We can talk about all the important important stuff. All right, so. Because, like, remember, you told me some important stuff, and I still watched it. That is true. That is true. So, I really miss Caesar. He was a very good character. The Especially the first time Joseph and Caesar meet each other. That really hit the, like, how their, their whole dynamic was going to be. Kind of like pretty much kids rough out housing. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, to be to be honest, Caesar had to grow on me a little. When we first saw him, when I first saw him, I was like, I was like, number one, you don't deserve to be a Zeppeli with the way this this swarm me, because I think what kind of initially uh, drew me off of him was that he had. That he that it was definitely he was very much like his grandfather William, mm-hmm. but he had no the experience to back it up. <laughs> so I was like, oh yeah, I can definitely see why this old man is such a charmer, or any or anything like that, mm-hmm. or why he's so good with Haman. And then when you come in Caesar, all of a sudden where he's like, show he's already better than Haman and Joseph, and he's like, and he's also such a good ladies man and and just a great people person i was like ah, i don't like this guy already <laughs> but as but as the the, the story went on I actually and you learn more, more about caesar's um his his whole situation with his, with his um, own family and how he views his grandfather and as well when he is bonding more with joseph i then start to be like you know what yeah i'm actually digging caesar and so when the moment that uh, when, when he, when he was crushed, I actually just like, Mike's like, I'm like, don't cry. Oh, those tears, man. Just oh, for those people tears, to I... know, he was crushed by pretty much, uh, a roof. Yeah. The second floor, I would say the second floor and the, that second floor was pretty much pure cement. Yep, and it and it cru- and it crushed him like nothing. And the and where's the funny the well not the funny but like the most kind of symbolic thing, which I'm not sure the the, the if the the author did this on purpose. At least in the anime, it was in the shape of a cross. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's in the manga as well, and I I think he probably did it that way to. Number one, emphasize that he's actually dead. <laughs> um, and I and I guess it just it's some nice imagery to pull out to represent, you know, life and death. But then what really kind of put me over the edge was when after when Joseph came in to to find to see that Zeppeli Caesar died, he picks up his bandana, and he wears it on, mm-hmm. and 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 I love that trope so much when character A grows with character B. Character B dies and so character A takes something from B as remembrance of them. And so we took so when we took that bandana, I was like, God dang it all oh, those tears, all oh, those tears I'm like, Joseph, you better freaking get cars, god dang it. What crushed me the most in the sense of the emotions was when yeah like during that time Joseph was blindly looking through the rubble to find Caesar in case if he was somehow still alive. So, but they never found him, and Lisa, Lisa was always telling him like, "No, let's let's not bother with this. We need to start. We need to keep going." And of course, at that time, Joseph kind of thought that Lisa, Lisa was just being very cold. But no, she was literally in the at the almost at the point of tears, but she wanted to hold back. And then that's when they saw the pool of blood finally seeping out of the rubble where the Caesar died from. And she just started bawling her eyes out. That crushed me. Like, as, you can tell, as you can tell, folks, part two that has, has, uh, improves on storytelling a lot from part one. There was definitely dramatic moments of part one, but part two cranks it up even more. And as well, it cranks up their villains and their action scenes so much. To the point that, for someone watching Part 2 when they went for the very first time, I was actually unsure of how Joseph was actually going to defeat the Pillarmen. Oh my god. If man. at all. Like, it, like, the stakes get super high. Like, to me... They were they were more high than part than the fight with than the the final fight in part three. Now let's talk now for the the villains, the pillarmen. Ah, uh, uh, 
the be- the villains with the best theme song ever. Exactly. You know, I don't know who the hell was the one that made that song for the Pillar Man, but they should get but an he, indefinite raise. He he des- he he deserves a commendation. He should at least at least have his name in the Anime Hall of Fame. Like that is my him favorite. and the sound engineer. That is my favorite song out of all of JoJo. Uh, when it comes to villains, like man. and and as for the villains itself, the Pillar Men just each of them worked in their own unique ways, and yet they still ret- aside from the main one, the leader cars. Each of them retains their villainous nature, but yet their kind of silly uh, behavior. And at the same time, but, they had some of the like, except for cars, really. They the others had pretty good, or not pretty good, but they had their reasons to be evil in a way. They just didn't yeah, really choose and, the right path. Yep, and I believe correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Get what and and um even um. Wamu, I believe Wam, I believe Wamu was the more like even honorable all of all of them. Wamu was really the most wa- uh Wamu. <laughs> he was the most honorable out of all of them. He was really mm-hmm. my favorite pillarman. Yeah, he was like he was like the one pillarman. I was like, all right, I I don't like what you're doing, but I respect you. Essie Desi, he's the one that, that cried, right? Yeah, yeah. He was weird. He, so this is what happened. He pretty much, if I'm correct, he got his arm cut off during the fight with Joseph in the middle of his fight. He looks at his arm, and Joseph is here thinking, I don't know, something about like he's going to be angry or something like that. No. he Essie, Essie just literally starts bawling his eyes out, crying about his arm. For a solid minute. And then just like back to normal. It's like, okay, that, that I felt I feel better now. That I just needed a good cry. Yep, and get and, and like, luckily I have I have the manga. I have the um volume where that happens. I kid you not. He cries for two for one, two he cries for like for two pages. There's literally one page of just his face crying, <laughs> another one of a full body shot of him crying, and then a page later he's back to normal. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that scene made me go like, "What is wrong with him?" And uh, here, here it is. Uh, here's here's his dialogue. Phew, I feel better. My personality is a bit wilder than Cars or Whammo, you see. When I lose my temper and get flustered, I start bawling in order to cool my head. Yeah, I brought up Sun Tzu earlier, correct? I know him as well, you see. I journeyed to China long ago. All warfare is based on deception. To fight is to deceive. If you anger your enemy and get inside of his head, you can create an opening to attack. That is what you're trying to do, correct? I should not fall for it. So literally, it was a strategic sob. (laughs) He cried out of strategy (laughs) just to throw Joseph off. (laughs) But also, uh, also like the, um, how each of the pillar men had their own unique uh, skill sets, and I always found Essie Desi's just the one that kind of ooh, like it, it rubs me the wrong way. Why? How he uses his his veins. Why? I don't. It could. I don't know. Is the out of the anime or maybe in the manga? It's just drawn so. It's, it's, it gives me. I don't know something about like little tiny stems coming out of a person's body and. Movie in a very technical like fashion, it just ugh, oh, ugh. so it just kind of makes you uneasy and disgusted in a way. Yeah, so like I was so glad when Joseph so, killed so him. So basic, basically, his power was the blood in his veins is so hot that it's like lava. And that's what, he, and he, and he literally just whips around his veins so that he could burn things in 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 his. In his air, in around his area. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's totally how things work. Totally. <laughs> yep. And we go to the big one, cars. Now, cars. My God. 
Where to even begin with this guy? He was the one villain where I was at a point where I was just like, "How is he? How is Joseph gonna win this?" And and as well, he was also he was also to me, besides being like the scummiest of all three Pillarmen, since I believe, he, um, ah. Uh, no, 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 I'm going to confuse something else. But he was definitely was the more scummiest of all of them. And pretty much did not care that any of them died. He was like, eh, well, more for me. Yeah. And and didn't he... Is it me? It, am I remembering wrong? But didn't he cheat in his fight against Lisa Lisa? Oh, definitely. He did. Uh, how did he... Oh, I forgot. How did he cheat against Lisa Lisa? He basically got another person or like an undead of some sort and projected himself like onto him like basically made a clone in a way a mirrored clone and lisa lisa attacked the clone killed it but then uh cars literally came out of nowhere and just like started messing up her stuff ah uh, okay oh by the way uh, do you pronounce it the Redstone of Asia or the Redstone of Asia? Hmm. Because I always see those two translations in the anime and the manga. The manga has it the Redstone of Asia, but the anime has it the Redstone of Asia. Huh. I didn't notice that. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. The, the anime they they change more than just like the obvious um uh. Uh, um, pop popular artist names like they change some weird they change weird things all 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 around. Yeah, uh, for for example, I didn't really pick this up until Hack told me about it, which was that some of the names were changed a little bit because of copyright issues. Like SCDC is actually just ACDC, and what was Wamu again? Wham. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yep, and so... Now, of course, of course, once you get into the series, you just start calling them as they are, and not, like, through the... through the the, the, the different names that Crunchyroll has given mm-hmm. them. Like, freaking the the early Pillarman you see, who's not quite grown. Like, are you gonna call him Sant Vieta? No, he's, he's, he's Santana. Yeah. No, he's Vincent, <laughs> he's Vincent Fernandez. Vincent Fernandez, that's what his name is now. Vincent. Yes, Vincent Fernandez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I can't wait for his next record. <laughs> but, but um, but, but with cars, he's definitely not. A, he's not as as a memorable villain as Dio in Part One. But I think he works really well. Um, as like this big elemental force that Joseph has to go against more than, than more than like a personal villain because with Dio there was definitely that personal bonding that he had with Jonathan and that would have made his villainy and character work mm-hmm. with Cars in part 2 it's not uh, Cars certainly did a f- did do some things that made it personal for Joseph but overall, but overall, it was more Joseph trying to figure out how do I stop basically a god. Yeah. And so I believe I believe that's how I like Car's work in that in that faction. I believe that he worked well like that, and he was this just this big force that Joseph, while cle- that he cleverly figured out how to beat him. It was I I did not know how. how how he do that and why he do that, but it worked. It's amazing. It somehow you, you know, like if you think about it, which is kind of like you shouldn't, you shouldn't be thinking about it because if you do, you it's never gonna make sense. But how fast was that launch for the rock? Too like. I don't recall volcanoes being powerful enough to to lift things into at least the into the stratosphere. Right. <laughs> like they're powerful, 
but they're not that powerful. <laughs> I was, I was so, and like, and if that was like a real volcano that had that such power, they could send giant uh, rock craters into the upper atmosphere. Freaking! By the time Joseph came down, like there should be like just lava everywhere, and people will be dying. It'd be like it'll be the second, um, um, uh, it'll be the second Pompeii. <laughs> but no, by the time he comes back, he's like, oh, everything's fine. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but that ending oh. though, where people thought that he died. Oh, that's right. He 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 pretty. And he, then he's just kind of appear out of nowhere and being like, hey, guys. Pretty much, it was like, hey, how's everyone doing? What's the funeral for? He looks over, it's his own name in it. I'm like, it was for me? What? <laughs> oh, that's, oh my god, that's right. I thought it was immediate. No, it was like several months after that he finally reveals himself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. J- Joseph's kind of a, jo- Joseph's kind of an ass. <laughs> well, well, it wasn't his fault. At least from the animation part. <gasps> Remember, it was his wife's fault. Well, he wasn't married yet. Yeah, he was. Well, yeah, the end. Of, at, wait. At the end. Did he propose? At the end, but. But it, it was it okay. Well, actually, yeah. Oh, wait, was Susie Q's idea? No, like here's the thing. He came back to see them. Uh, and. Be- but he was in the tri- he was pre- pretty much like he was pretty much having to recover near where Susie Q was at, and that's where they oh. that's where they actually that's when they got married, and Joseph oh, I remember. told told Susie Q, hey, can you let everyone know that I'm okay? Send a message, and somewhere along the lines she forgot. That's right. He <laughs> did not remember now. That was stupid. So literally everyone thought he was dead. They were used to... imagine that going to the office to sign that death certificate and everything, just to find out he was on the other side of the world in Italy, honeymooning and recovering. Joseph Joseph, everyone, every <laughs> the my uh, uh, open my my third favorite JoJo, my third. Oh, favorite. and we gotta we gotta at least talk about the the secret Joe Star the secret Joseph Joe Star tactic he has here. Oh that's right. Remember folks, if you're if if you're stuck if you're stuck between a situation and you don't know what to do, just use the secret Joe Star technique. Run away <laughs> run away <laughs> Just run away folks. Love- that's what great that's what great heroes do. I love it. On the second time he did that, I think it was either the second or third time he did that, and he's like, oh, "I guess I'm gonna have to use the secret Joe Stark technique." And Smokey was like, "Is he? Is he actually gonna do it?" Everyone here is like, "Oh, that's right." Everyone, the like, build up, <laughs> like, "What? What is he gonna do? Is it something powerful?" He's no, he's gonna do it. <laughs> Run away! <laughs> and Smokey runs with him. <laughs> oh man, so. So overall, for for me, for 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 me, part two, definitely it has it improves a lot of things of part one. It's, it's more dramatic. It's more heartbreaking. It's definitely a, has a lot more humor um, than in part than in part one. So it's it's what a good sequel does. It 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 continue it continues off what the. F- uh, with the first part started, and improve and improves on that foundation. And to me, part two improves everything. Imp- imp- improves everything that part one established. The only real gripe I with part two, only real gripe, is that uh, I, I had oh I just don't lose it, don't lose it, don't lose it. Okay, there you go. My my only real gripe with part two. Is that sometimes the f- fights can get a little drawn out, yeah. or or they get there there's so much into just explaining what's going on and actually seeing the fight. There's a little bits of that, or especially is much worse in the anime, mm-hmm. because if you notice within um, part one and two are just one season of the of the show. 
and it's kind of like half and half, right? Half of like t- part one's like what twelve episodes, and part two's like another twelve episodes. Yeah, yeah I think. pretty much. Well, the actual well the actual manga volumes. Part one is just three manga volumes. Part two is four manga volumes. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 I think they kind of over over they overdid on the fights a bit to. To both, it's kind of show the amount of what Haman can do, but to also to his detriment. And even Araki admits this. I remember hearing an interview where he pretty much, after finishing part two, he was like, I have no idea what to do with Haman now. Because <laughs> he pretty much just did, he like overdid everything for part two. But, but because of that, now ladies and gentlemen, we're finally getting into the most popular, the most famous of all JoJo of all JoJo stories going to part three Stardust Crusaders if this if this was if this if I could able to do it I would edit in the freaking Stan Proud song right now but I can't but part three now this one I'm, uh, I have not read it yet I've only just seen the anime and luckily besides a few details here and there Jack uh, what what you watched in part of the anime is identical to what's in the manga. Ooh, okay. Yeah. So that's one that's one thing I will give the anime huge credit for is that they don't go too crazy in trying to change things just just for because it's in a new medium. Besides details and names, the anime is extremely faithful to the manga. So your experience with the with reading the book and watching the show is going to not only be the same, but you kind of see all the subtleties and how, like, how they will animate certain panels and how that tra- translated. Now, for part three, part, we can't go, unfortunately, if this was a five-hour, if this was a live stream, we'll go on everything <laughs> for part three. But since we're not there yet, who knows, maybe one day we'll be a live stream podcast instead of a a recording one, but I want to, I want to highlight just kind of these important things of part three. Uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. I want to ask these questions, Jack. What's your? It, you can't use the fight. You can't. You've told me that the young Darby fight was pr- your favorite stand fight, <laughs> and that was a great fight. So now I'm going to ask you, what's your second favorite stand fight? My second favorite would be. Let's see. Just by pure comedy wise, Boingo Boingo. You have to specify because they were they. I think there's like two of two of them. No. There's the Oingo pole horse one. I'm talking about Oingo uh, and Boingo, or how apparently uh, the subtitled part of it. Like for some weird reason, the sub the subtitle call it Zenyatta and Mandara. Yep. Thank, thanks, Crunchyroll. That's totally you. Totally get that from Oigo Boingo. And also, that was a test. I don't want to test ya. So the the Oigo, yeah, the Oigo Boingo one that was like freaking hilarious. <laughs> All right, so pretty much was... this whole fight, they didn't you even call know it they were a fight. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> literally the Joe Stars, the 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 team, the the, the our new team of character of of heroes. Are just walking along, Oingo and Boingo are stand users, and pretty much their stand is is that they can, uh, I have to remember they can see the future, kind of, but doesn't reveal like them entirely. Something like that. So wait, okay, Oingo, his stand is uh taught, not thought, but taught, and basically it's a manga book where he can see the near future, the very near future. That's right. And Boingo, his stand, I uh, forgot what it was called, but it, it's another Egyptian god, pretty much. And pretty much all it is, is he can change the, change the way his face looks, pretty much shape-shift it to anything he wants it to be. That's right, and just shenanigans ensue. Especially, <laughs> you would think that a book that can predict the near future, you think they will be winning. Nope. You would think. <laughs> You would have thought you thought wrong. 
My favorite part of the whole thing was literally the ending when they were finally fighting. Well, they he finally they finally quote unquote beat Boingo Boingo, where you saw apparently Boingo's perception of Jotaro, which had this ridiculously longer hat. Oh, that's right. To the point where no, that like, weird ar- it just kind of like flops around. That's right, it's that weird art style that he has for his little manga. <laughs> Lixie, well, as for me, uh, since I haven't revealed my favorite stand fight, mine, w- mine is gonna ha- is gonna go to. Th- it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna go to, Darby the Elder. That one that one was a good one too. That one not only was it an intense, s- silly. But also just how Jotaro be him in a way. <laughs> like no, like it's, it's it's one of those fights where no punches are thrown, but yet someone still ended up on the floor on the floor passed out. So on this <laughs> fight, Darby Elder, because there's two Darbys, Darby Elder and Darby Younger. Darby Younger, his whole stand was the his whole fight was pretty much a video game. Darby Elder, his whole fight was poker, or specifically gambling in general. Yep, and what his stand could do is that pretty much he could steal your soul if you, uh, if you do a wager. And so, the whole fight, he kept winning all these all these um, bets he's having against the Joe Stars. Excuse me. And each, and I believe three of them oh, uh, each I believe three of them plus a few other people kept losing their souls. So it was till it was Jojo's turn to go against them. And pretty much, Jojo found a way to win literally a fixed gambling gambling match just by bluffing. It was the biggest bluff of the century. <laughs> yes, and all he did on all and all that took Darby off was that Jojo got an iced tea that he didn't see. Yeah, like, okay, so, uh, let me just clarify a little bit about Darby's stand. The reason, the way, how it works and how it steals the soul is, supposedly, the stand users or the person's soul energy, that's what he calls it. Like, literally out of nowhere, this terminology came out of nowhere. The soul energy drops to zero, or just drops to a low enough point where the stand can easily pull the soul out of the person's body and he can just like clap it and make turn it into a poker chip. He will literally just take and, your soul and turn it into a poker chip. And as well and he also had control over the entire little um cafe that they were at. Yeah. So li- and so literally everything he controlled every he controlled every single minute detail of that caf- cafe, even fixed the cards, and still lost. Also, I just recalled, I, I also, I love the way how Paul and Ralph lost his soul. <laughs> how was it again? I, I quickly forgot about it. Uh... Uh, Darby makes a bit of porn, porn rap the, of, oh, yeah. of saying, which jerky the cat will eat. Yeah. <laughs> And Pyro's like, it's easy. The, the the bigger ones on the right. The cat will go go right. Cat goes left. Wait, what? Pff, soul stone. Yep. Yep. Freaking polar rabbit. He's, to imagine polar rabbit guys, he's like, he's the he's the he's the butt of every joke in Stardust Crusaders. Like literally, the show goes out to just humiliate him every single turn. <laughs> I mean, with that type and, of hair. <laughs> and and it's very strange too because uh, going to Porner for for a moment. Not only does he has like he has like a like a legit tragic backstory, but but the show always makes fun of him at every moment it gets. <laughs> Even the most heart wrenching one, he still was the butt of the joke at the very end. And. It could, I think, I and I think it could be this. It could be due to that because when you meet Ponorev, 
for the very first time. Like, if you weren't, if you didn't know how he's eventually going to be, you were like, oh, man, who is this guy? He's got a sword. He attacks super fast at sonic speed. Man, he, he's, oh, man, this guy's legit. As soon, and, and as soon as he gets his revenge, he becomes the co- comedic relief. Like, like, think about it. As soon as Pornrav gets his revenge due to his backstory, uh, the show them is like, all right, he's 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 pretty much done with his character, so we're just gonna make fun of him throughout the rest of the journey. So here's the thing with me, I just it just dawned on me because it doesn't really happen often, even at all. I wouldn't count it, like even at all. The only time he ever used the first secret part of his stand, which is the taking off his stand's armor. That was literally the last time, at least from what I can recall. Remember? I, th- I yeah, 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 I remember. I thought it was. Wait, did his did his stance armor get back? Did 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 they like put the armor back on for for the, for the other fights? Oh well, yeah, like it, it takes off the armor for that. It it can be able to take off the armor to get a speed boost, but of course we'll lose the defense. Yeah, yeah, and he's still and he's still lost. <laughs> yeah, he's still lost. But I'm, <laughs> what I'm getting here is I've never seen that happen anymore. Oh, he like, didn't do it against Vanilla Ice. No, he didn't. Which were, I would have thought he would. Yeah, and another thing, ladies and gentlemen, about JoJo, there's a lot of things that are presented and then completely then are forgotten about well, within the no, series. Like, that part was not ne- not entirely forgotten. Remember the fight with the Anubis? Ah, uh, vaguely, vaguely. So, uh, for it's one of the standard fights, I'm like kind of uh, so. For some of you, Anubis, you would think it would be like some just because you some of you might know Egyptian gods just by the way they look. You might think it's like something, some very big stand. No, it's a sword that could possess you. But yep. Polnareff accidentally, by the, I think it was because of the police officer that got in the middle of it, was the police officer was grabbing the sheath of the sword and Polnareff was grabbing the actual sword's hilt. He accidentally t- took it off and was possessed. Jotaro ended up having to fight Polnareff. And at one point, Jotaro actually broke the armor on his stand's left shoulder, or the, the right shoulder, where he uses his actual sword. And Polnareff, or at least the Anubis possessed Polnareff, explains, Ah, you broke the armor. I'm a little bit faster with this hand now. So it's there. They just never bothered using the whole fully take off the armor to get faster. And here's another and here's another detail. How uh here's another detail that was kinda quickly quickly forgotten. You remember those little little, little parasite things Dio put on Kakyoin? Yeah. And the show presented how it was kinda like this bi- this like this big deal that we gotta get these little parasite things out so that the person can go back to normal. Mm-hmm. How relevant did that become? Well, here's the thing. The, the, here's the thing. Dio only put uh-huh. this on people he did not trust. Even though technically he doesn't trust anyone in general. So he, he should have put them on all of them. Yeah, but... But like, like, but then why introduce it in the first place then? Just to introduce two new characters to be inside the group. No, no, not even that. I, to me, it was just introduced just to show off how just to show off how accurate Star Platinum can be. I think that's really only it. It was just a little plot device to show off Jotaro's stand abilities. Yeah, because he does because he pulls up what only two ones of a Calculator and I believe one of a Bonariff. Yep. yep, and that's it. Appar- apparently, he <laughs> he figured all the other stand users were trustworthy enough. <laughs> oh, by the way, 
Uh, we never hmm. really actually explained this, but so the current, I guess the main Joe Star that you're gonna be seeing in part three is Jotaro Kuch. Ah, uh, huh? that's right. We kind of jumped into jumped into it pretty pretty high. Well, for those who've been trying to keep up with our uh, ramblings conversation, <laughs> no, I won't say ramblings. Try to keep up with our JoJo topic number one. Uh, if you're far this this deep in. And well, actually, kudos to you. You hopefully we're selling the show to you. But to the main JoJo for part three is Jotaro Kujo. To describe him, he's the Clint Eastwood of anime. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now, in fact, let's also talk he, about the that there is also another JoJo or Joe Star still walking around with them. Uh, oh, that's right. That's right. And as an and as well. Joseph Joestar from the previous uh, part is also along in his adventure, and he's now an old man. Mm-hmm. But still in his prime, apparently. You, you can still see him lift tree like tree trunks. Yep, he's pr- he's he's pretty much he's pretty much a, a ripped grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> he's every old dude in anime ever. <laughs> <laughs> So and uh, and and of course the rest of the Stardust Crusaders we got our we got um every fangirl's crush Kakyoin, Ka- who is the pretty pretty much the pretty boy of the group and he's just he he has his moments but he's really just there for someone to kind of talk with Jotaro and also provide exposition. Yeah. We should say more about him. We already talked about Ponorav. He, I think, t- he, he's the most memorable of all the Stardust Crusaders. Definitely. And and of course, and we have the sh- the straight the straight man, the no nonsense character of Muhammad Abdul. It's actually mm-hmm. pretty cool. And then, so he, very 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 far towards the end, uh, we the have we have Iggy. Iggy. Iggy's a dog. Yep, it's a dog. It's literally just a dog. Not even a big dog. It's a Boston Terrier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in Iggy, he's level he's love he's lovable. He's a dog. It doesn't matter. As soon as as soon as we see the dog the dog on screen, everyone's like, oh most memorable line for Iggy. He just wanted just... <laughs> He just wanted to get some bitches. That's alright. That's alright. That's all. That's all the motivation you need. What more do you and, want? And it makes sense for him to say "bitch" because those are female dogs. That's correct. Oh, and of course, the big villain for part three. Well, it is a return. Is an old villain from part one. One kind of detail we forgot to we forgot to mention during our part one discussion was that is that during that story, Dio became a vampire. Mm-hmm. And while Joseph, while Jonathan did defeat him, he didn't entirely kill him. And so, hundreds of years later, Dio comes comes back, and na- and he comes back with the goal of number one, uh, with the goal of trying to, pretty much, what was it like, uh, make the world in his image, his image as Dio fits it. And in order to do that, he needs the blood of the Joe Star family. Yep. Yep. And and because of his return, strange occurrences are are, are happening. With and and one of the strange occurrences is with Jotaro's uh, mother, who is a Joseph's daughter. She becomes ill and is then thrust, and so because of their mother's illness. And the close to the fact that she could die from it, it draws Jotaro and Joseph, along along with Abdul, who tags alongside Joseph, to go on to this quest to defeat Dio. I, I actually, uh, Jack, I want to ask you this question. This is and isn't it go slight? Isn't it go slight slightly on the? slightly uh, uh, political and I'm only bringing this up because it's a weird uh, criticism of Stardust Crusaders Mm -hmm. that I never understood and I'm going to see what your perspective on it 
So for some reason, one uh, and this was and this has happened before, and this criticism was been around ever since before of how things are on social media and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, a lot of there's a good number of people who who believe that start that Stardust Crusaders uh, doesn't treat their female characters well, or and the or, or, the, or that they're just no. used as plot device plot devices or they're just there no i for me personally i think the female characters were treated very well in the sense of what they were i mean that's that's what i thought too and for the most part most of them were villains i mean like yes they were villains but they were pretty strong villains almost yeah. killed them especially especially mariah mariah yes and um, and I, I don't really know this, but remember the stand u- uh, I forget what it was. Remember the stand user who that you never that you never saw, but she had like. Uh, yeah, I know which one you're talking something? about. I know which one. Uh, it was during the submarine episode. Yeah. You never Turns really saw out the that... face because apparently it was so gruesome what they did to her face that they didn't want to show it. Yeah, unfortunately, she actually has a character model, a care like a character design. She just looks weird. That's it. And here's the <laughs> thing: go- it wasn't at, like when we say they did like horrible things to her face. It's not that bad. It's just like they literally beat her teeth in. Well, yeah. Be, okay, so here's how stands work. Whatever your stand feels like in sense of pain the user will also feel the pain. Kind of like how you think of, let's say, for some people, Yu-Gi-Oh! You know that weird thing where people's monsters get destroyed, they start going, ah! That's kind of like what's happening here. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Jotaro literally just order order his way out of the stand's mouth. And since he order order his way out of the stand's mouth by breaking every single teeth, I mean, he didn't really have to break every single one of them, but he did anyways. He broke every single tooth, tooth there, and whatever happens to the stand happens to the user as well. So you can kind of infer what happened to her face. And going back to the criticism I brought up, I don't think it's really, I don't think it's really warranted. I honestly have no idea where it comes from, but I only bring this up because it's it's a weird topic. That some people like to bring up, and mostly it comes down to what happened with Holly, uh, the the mom. Yeah. And I'm like, well, she's not a main. And to me, I'm like, she's not. She's not a main character. She's the reason why the adventure begins. She's not even a side character. But, she's more of a plot device. Exactly, which is not inherently bad, but for some reason, people are like, well, why don't she has her own stand? I don't know. I'm not the writer. She does have her own stand. It's trying to kill her. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I was like, only. So I was. Just, I was just allowed to bring to light to you that for some reason that show has that criticism against it. And I'm like, this is a show where you have pretty much spirits coming out of a person's body, and your spirit is fighting another spirit. I don't think you should be like. Literally, no one should be thinking politically on this whole show. Exactly, and, and but for some reason, it's only part three, the where I've seen that. Only part three where that's brought up. Everything else is fine. You literally have a I man that stops <laughs> time, and then just out of pure anger for you or hatred, he just like goes off, finds a steamroller, and throws it on you, and punches a steamroller till it explodes, well, and then constantly yelling, "Useless! Useless! Useless!" Mm-hmm. Yeah, anyway, yeah. I'll, I'll end that part because I, I, just, I just wanted to let you know it's, that's just kind of one of the strange things to come out of at least JoJo, at least in more recent times. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to kind of enlighten you about that, that that, that, that it exists. That's, that's... In fact, I remember I recall there was an uh, uh, anime YouTuber that I used to, I used to watch, and I really liked, mo- liked his stuff. And he was actually going to... Re- and, and one day he reviewed um, the original... Jojo anime, which was just an adaptation of part three. Mm-hmm. 
back from like the 90s and 2000s. And the review was going along well until he brought that up out of nowhere. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, hold on. I was like, it was a long review. I was like, everything was going good, but then he brought that up and he was speaking. I was like, this is like a grave mistake on the anime. I was like, why? Just why? And how anime. could they? Don't like people again. Don't <laughs> don't just put politics in everything. It just sours the mood of whatever you're watching. I know it. It definitely did for me on that freaking an, uh, animators um, that YouTube review, and I'm like, dude, I did not sign up for this. If you're gonna be like, I, after that, I could not subscribe because that alone was enough to be like, if this is the direction you're going, I'm like, I'm not gonna, I don't, I don't want to be around. I liked you guy, but if this is where you're going, where you just finally bring it up, feminism, and we're talking about JoJo, um. I think it might be the wrong audience. I mean, hey, if you want to go political, <laughs> I think the Mariah episode is clearly showing how they're pro, uh, pro LGBT. Remember, you know that scene. You remember that scene. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I remember. Uh, funny enough, actually, in the original adaptation mm -hmm. mariah wasn't even in the show it was wasn't even in the ovas uh it wasn't even in the yeah she wasn't in it mm -hmm. it was pretty much a more more condensed version of part three so a lot of, so almost like 90 percent of the stand fights were cut out except for the really important ones that relate to the plot so uh just to say mariah's whole stand is she can magnetize anyone mm -hmm. so imagine and... two big buff men Stuck together. Yep, stuck stuck together like that. In the most awkward positions ever for them. And they are telling each other, this is very embarrassing. And, they, and weren't they like stuck each other in front of kids or something? Yeah, and these kids, and they, <laughs> kids they, they shoot off the kids. Oh, and Joseph was like, get out of here. They left just to bring more kids to watch. I forgot about that. And, and they, the best part was when they finally freed themselves for like one split second. And you could see the happiness in their face just for the realization that now they're getting stuck together in this, in what looks like a doggy style. Oh, God. And <laughs> just for getting oh, Joseph. Oh, no! Oh my oh, god! <laughs> so in conclusion, everyone, in conclusion, part part three is an experience. It is much longer than parts one and two, and we will, I will, trust. I would love to go through every single thing that part two has to offer. I'm sorry, part three has to offer. But we'll be here. We'll be here all day, <laughs> all night, folks. So pretty much to truncate get everything that. JoJo goes to a new direct in a new in a new direction in terms of the action scenes in terms of uh, the the way of of the of the abilities and 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 the story instead of becoming sort of like a a regular kind of hero's journey that parts one and two were, part three is more of your monster of the week story. So every new chapter or every episode of the show. Is, is them dealing with the new stand user. And trust me, there's plenty of other stand users that we have not mentioned that are just as enter en entertaining. There's a few duds here and there, but overall, it's a. I like to I like to be part three. It's pretty much think it's pretty much an ode to a whole bunch of '80s entertainment, all in one like giant uh, adventure. Yep. And so, tits, and so we finally come into the end of our uh, uh, end of our journey as we now go into part four. Now, fortunately, we can't go too much as Jack has has not finished watching the show. So, Jack, just uh, tell me where have you stopped in part four? Right now, I have stopped where Josuke, or yeah, yeah, Josuke finally met Joseph. All right then. So so he's actually pretty so he's actually pretty far in. I believe that's like midway 
through the se- at least through the season and end, I believe. Now, it's now getting towards the part where you mentioned that halfway the season, the halfway to the season, you're finally seeing the plot. Yeah. So, so this is what we're going to talk about now. Report four. Um, anime wise, we go into a very different different direction in terms of storytelling and of visuals because pretty much at by this point gone are the muscle men mm-hmm. gone are all of that the art is is start becoming to what how jojo looks now with and 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 as well we go from hero's journeys or parts one and two to monster of the week stories to part three to part four Imagine, it's like part four is slice of life mixed with JoJo. <laughs> that is the best That's way at to least, describe it. I never thought of that. <laughs> yeah, at, at least for a good portion of part four, that is what JoJo's uh, Diamond is Unbreakable is. There is a th- there is uh, things leading up to a plot, which Jack will eventually see what it is. But overall, is just pretty much um, a whole bunch of stand users are, are popping up in this town and you see our, our new Jojo, Josuke um, and his and his friends interact with him in very different ways, either through fighting or through the or through uh, just, just just meeting them now so far from what you have seen of part of 4 Jack, any any mer- any memorable or outstanding moments you uh, you can think of right now? For me, like what as soon as I watched this episode, I'm like, this is the this is my favorite moment now, for this this uh part. It was when they first met Tony, Tony. Oh, sorry. The Italian cuisine <laughs> chef. I knew it. I knew you were gonna pick the Italian cuisine. <laughs> Seriously, I thought this was gonna like for me. When I saw this episode, I was hoping to the bottom of my heart that this guy was just a nice guy, and he really just wanted to give people some good food to the point where your apparently your entrails would start bursting out of your body. <laughs> and were you disappointed? I was not disappointed. I was happy that he turned out to be a good guy, in the sense of he just wants good food. Yep, and his stand and his stand, a lo- and I love his actually his stand ability. Pretty much, if you, uh, if you eat his stand, it pretty much fixes, kind of heals you up from the inside. Pretty so, much. But like, here's the thing about his stand. Okay, I got. It's so interesting. It has two parts. The stand. The first part is that one. That's the main thing about the stand. It will heal you from the inside. The second part is somehow by just looking at you. He could tell exactly what's wrong with you. So this is uh, Josuke's friend, or kind of like developed friend, uh, Oku, or Yukasu or something. I forgot. I just literally had a brain fart moment. Okuyasu. Yeah, Okuyasu. So Okuyasu comes in. He wants something to eat. Tonio come- and looks at him, and he's like, "Okay." You have a stiff shoulder, you have insomnia, you have athlete's foot, and you had diarrhea. And, of course, Okuyasu was like, <laughs> how did you know? <laughs> how did you know all this? And then, and then cut, and then, Tonio then proceeds to, to, get, uh, to serve him food that would help with all those different issues. And at first, Okuyasu was like, I don't know about this, it's probably probably lying but just from the first dish just a salad after he eats it okay oh, he's like oh my god technically it's, it's like, not a salad it's an antipasta that's correct <laughs> that's correct he eats that all in like is that the one no no not, no no i said it and they didn't they didn't fix a stiff shoulder no the antipasta fixed him oh sorry the antipasta fixed his insomnia and okay so here's what uh, 
That, that's right. That's right. That's, I want. But I want to get my favorite part. One of my favorite part is when he drinks the water. Oh yeah. <laughs> Apparently the <laughs> water was. Oh no, the water was the one that fixed the insomnia. I think. Yeah. Oh yeah, it, it was because literally, it had, especially seeing the art, like he the the way it's drawn is so disturbing because the eyes literally dry out and like it looks deflated until all of a sudden, boop, it's back to normal. Like, okay, so that's the thing what made me like go, what is going on here? So Tonio's ability, as we said before, heals the person from the inside. The catch is, it looks so gruesome. Whatever is happening to the person, it looks like something it's dangerous is going on. It's horrifying. Yeah. So again, we're gonna go back to the the insomnia part. He Okuyasu was so filled with awe from this water that apparently tasted like, uh, like from the rivers of a mountainside. He starts crying. And then it goes from crying to literal geysers from his eyes to the point where his eyes shrivel up like a raisin. And Tonio's just kind of there like, don't worry. It's fixing his insomnia. Like, very stone cold. And Josuke is just like, what the hell are you doing to him? Stop this. And Okuyasu, hey. I, I feel like I slept like 10 hours. Back to normal. Yep. And 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 so on and so forth with the rest of the food. Now, Jack, I actually want to ask you. Mm -hmm. Would you, knowing how your body is going to react, would you take the risk of eating Tonio's food if it was real? Yes. Me too. <laughs> Admittedly, me I too. I might feel pain for a second, but I'm assuming it's like the... It's, I'm assuming it's like those deep tissue massages where you feel brief pain and then a very big rush of relief. Oh, hopefully. Hopefully. But I mean, like... No, way, so you're... Watch, watch, you cure your, watch you cure your blindness with the, with the food. Just guys, if you have diarrhea or like have irritable bowels of some sort and you're going to eat his uh, Tonio's food, be prepared to see your own intestines burst out of your chest because that's what happens yep. that literally happens he eats this like I think this beef wellington of some sort like some type of lamb uh, some type of meat eats it and then out of nowhere his intestines come out of his mouth and his stomach and a so it was hor it's the most horrifying thing of Exactly. Ever. It looks like he was about to explode. And then, five, like, literally two seconds later. Hey, I'm back to normal. Boop. Yep. Oh, man. Uh, as far, uh, to go into my perspective on part four, at least just for the first half, um, one, uh, one of my favorite stand uh, stand uh, fights would have to be with Red Hot, red hot Chili I Peppers. I you are going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, it, 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 I, I, it's just, it's just, a, I, I just find it like kind of the most memorable, especially the stand user who controls that stand. Jesus Christ, the the way when he fixed his pinky, oh, that gave me like shivers. Oh, that's right. Because knowing, like me also being a guitarist, just seeing him go from a pinky that's like, just look at your pinky right now, now. Imagine someone bending it backwards to where it snapped off. That's how his pinky was. He's playing his guitar, trying to do a solo, and then out of nowhere you just hear <laughs> pinky back to normal and starts playing regularly, doing giant riffs throughout the whole guitar. And I'm here like, how the hell can you do that? That's the power of rock and roll, man. <laughs> And also stands, but <laughs> so the I, I I found him, and also and also I love the design of the, of of the sta of that stand as well. I know it kind of looks like a, like a like a featherless bird. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It has a, some charm to it. Oh, I got one question uh, though. What is it? Where the hell was the amplifier? He didn't need it. 
don't know. Actually, I never asked myself that. I just figured the sound was coming from his stand or something. <laughs> so basically, he's he holds out an electric guitar, and you hear it with clear distortion. That there is no amplifier or pedals anywhere. He's just playing it, and you can hear distortion to the point where he can apparently speak like Japanese syllables from his guitar. Oh, that's right. Um, that's just how good he is, man. <laughs> get a, get a, get a, get up on your level, man. <laughs> let me let me see you start playing guitar with without a ped a pedal or an amp. Then, then, then tell me then how to greet you. Then I'm gonna start saying English words through my guitar. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, let's see. And, and as a as well, and as one character, I also want to give props to, because I think, in spite of his, in spite of how he looks, I honestly, I honestly like it. I think he is a true. Uh, 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 I honestly like him more than Josuke. Josuke is kind of doesn't do much for me, but Koichi. So far, from what you've seen, Koichi is pretty cool. Is he's pretty fine, but as the show went on, to me, Koichi like a multiple time just to me proves that he's more than just a little like. Uh, he's more than just what he could have been the Krillin of the That's show. Oh God, he like powered up, like literally Super Saiyan powered up <laughs> on the first uh, his first quote-unquote transformation his hair literally stands up after that point of the fight <laughs> yeah and actually and actually um koichi and his stand um uh uh is it is it so is the is it subtitled as reverb or echoes it's both but officially they call them reverb by anime okay okay well there's a real his real stand name is echoes but um his him and his stand are act. It's all just a big homage, or I can even admit it. It's just a big homage to Dragon Ball. And just to say, on his <laughs> third transformation, quote unquote, basically you can tell his transformations by his hairstyle. First hairstyle, oh, yeah. it's very reserved. Like he's, you can tell mm. just by the hairstyle, he's supposed to be the timid, shy one that's kind of cowardish, like kind of there. Second transformation. He, you can see that he his hairstyle is more serious and Super Saiyan esque. Like everyone knows how, like kind of like a little bit spiky there. Third hairstyle, he literally looks like Guile with the hairstyle. Now like, <laughs> that, that's a real hairstyle. I'll tell you he what. literally pulls up his hair and then starts cutting it. That should be Goku's trans, <laughs> uh, transformation there. Is that just getting extra more spikes? He gets a friggle flat top. <laughs> But I, I love I love Koichi. I like his little his character arc, and I also like I also like um, d during uh, his whole thing with uh, Yukiko <laughs> and how that develops. Yeah, I I think to me I, and 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 I always oh I I like that for the simple fact that that through her as much as she's kind of a bad person. Mm -hmm. He still, that no, that he still, he's one of those few people that can say like, yeah, uh, I actually, actually changed this person for the better, no biggie. Yeah. And as well, and when he and his confrontations against her, I do, I do like the, um, just, just how much he, you see him kind of grow from where he was at the at the beginning of the of the story. Mm -hmm. To the point that he'll be essentially ready for the for near the end. So I like Koichi's little arc there. By the way, with Yukiko, yeah. do you prefer black haired or white haired? I actually liked Wait. her when she had white hair. When did she get white hair? She was smacked so hard by reverbs, like uh, sound wave or. Or something like that, that her hair turned white. I forgot that detail. Um, no, nah, I prefer the I prefer the black oh, hair. <laughs> oh yeah, well, oh yeah, well, maybe she should have gone to that freaking Cin Cinderella place. <laughs> oh, like since we're talking about characters that we love, 
So mm-hmm. sadly, the the this JoJo is not someone I'm particularly fond of as well. I just don't. I don't know. He seems kind of boring right now. <clears throat> yeah. For for what for me, Josuke. They're trying to, uh, to me, I think they're trying to do the thing where he's trying to make him look very similar to Joseph in that there are some noble things about him, but but he also has, like, very bad um, habits. Yeah, just don't make fun of his hair. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, but it's, uh, I guess, I, it's, I guess it's, Joseph did it so well that to see it kind of done again, it's like it's done before. We want something a little different. So Josuke doesn't really stand out, and because of the fact that for the first half of the story, Josuke is not necessarily the main character. Mm-hmm. He's more just a character we follow and we see the events around him. So it's hard. So it's hard for pe- so it's hard for him to kind of. He okay. He he has his like hero moments and whatnot, mm-hmm. but for the most part. That it's t- too far in between, so you just kind of see him as a regular teenager, yeah. which might have been what it, what uh, Rocky was going for, having a JoJo who to fit kind of fit in with a more realistic art style to have a more grounded JoJo. He's not some like noble gentleman. Mm. He's not a uh, this wisecracker, and he's not Clint Eastwood. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh. So I so I guess that's one. Uh, I could be perceived as a positive that for Josuke, he's definitely, he's definitely the more realistic so far out of the past uh, three Jo uh, three Jojos. I don't know. Definitely the more realistic. I don't know that the way he he reacted to Okiyasu fighting Red Hot Chili Pepper doesn't seem realistic. Oh. Well, realistic for Jojo standards anyway. <laughs> I'm like, oh, his arms here. Let me fix him up. Joseph, uh, Okuyasu having a breakdown. Hey, Jotaro, we should really get going. He might start... Red Hot Chili Pepper might go after Joseph. Yeah, we should go. Just, like, nonchalantly. Almost, someone almost died. Well, well, to be to be fair with his... To be fair with his power, and anything broken, be like, eh, just, just tap it. <laughs> True. But <laughs> my favorite character to be is actually Okuyasu. Just because he is tr- oh, 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 tr- oh, trust me. He's like a lot of people's favorite character. And I can see why. Is, I can see he why. He's so honest. Like, from the, the time he says, I'm pretty stupid. I'm oh, like, right. I like you. <laughs> I'm pretty stupid, so because of that, I don't really understand how my stand works. I'm pretty stupid, so you need to explain this to me. I'm like... I like that. I like that attitude. You're my yeah. favorite now. He's, yeah, he's, de- yeah, he's definitely the, um, he's he's the lovable oaf of, of of the show, the very lovable oaf. And trust me, audience, you're gonna love Ogiyasu. I I like him. I just like Koichi a bit more. But, uh, but as and of course we would. All, would go to the villain discussion, but so far, because of where Jack is, we can't do that just, we can't do that, uh, as of now. But, I think we spent, I think, to kind of, even though we're not as positive as part four in comparison to with parts one, two, and three, that's not to say it is entirely a show without any, um, any merit or that is not worth watching. Part four, to is definitely sh- you should give give it a watch. Is very, especially if if you want a more a more JoJo story that is not too focused on trying to be like a typical uh sh- sh- uh shown in anime. True. Part 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 four definitely makes us, makes us stand out that way. And personally, as far as the anime is involved, um, it has like. Real, real, really good music. Oh yeah, it does. The, I love it. It has real, really good music. Part th- part three has its moments, and and part one and two really only the openings and endings. 
the music or, or that memorable, but part four just music wise, not just the anime opening or the closing, but the soundtrack to the show itself is pretty rock. Actually, let me talk about the opening and closing music. So, usually when it comes to any type of anime I watch, I usually skip openings just because I really wanted to just watch the the movie or anime, whichever one I'm watching. I only had that issue with part three, surprisingly. Which is a shame because Stan Proud's pretty good. I don't know. I, I just did not. I mean, like, I liked part three's, uh, the uh, Road to Egypt. I forgot what it's called. But, like, the pretty much the Road to Egypt. That one, I like that, that oh, yeah. music. Oh yeah, that one's pretty good too. But I didn't like the the second one, where the uh, the second part of part three, uh, part, part three. I didn't like the opening music on that one. I don't know. It just. You think it was too? You think you think it was? It kind of sounded like too much, like kind of generic anime rock. Pretty to much. You? I, I, I can see that, especially, I can see that, I mean, I like Stand Proud, but it's not my absolute favorite. If I had to order them, number one, part one with Sono Chino Sana, man, freaking. Yeah. <laughs> it, the song literally ends with the guy going, Joe! Just go over that, that, lo- that name for as long as he can, Joe, it's like a freaking soccer game, announce, announcing a goal. Yeah. <laughs> part two, I love the... Uh, is it jazz? I want to say jazz. Yeah, kind of a little bit like that. Yeah, the, the, the little little jazz fu- jazzy feel it has for part two. I really like that one. And so, so yeah, I, I kind of I'm kind of with hack that part three's o- opening theme. Um, it works. I like it, but it can sound generic. And if you listen closely, Jack, um, it actually kind of sounds like Ken's theme if you really listen closely. I can believe that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, now, what about part f- uh, parts four of music? So far, I think you've only seen like just just, just the first um, opening, I believe. Yeah, the opening I really love. The first opening. Crazy noise. The. Oh. I tried to give a listen to the ending credit one. It was okay. Uh, I I like the ending credits of that one. I I just like kind of like the the when I when I released the lyric I was like this is a very strange thing he's describing. Yeah. But I I like I, I like the I like the increase of that one and of, and of course with roundabout and with walk like an Egyptian. Yeah. <laughs> I was not expecting walk like an Egyptian to show up as an ending credit song for a Japanese anime. That's that's the one that'll get credit for JoJo. They 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 get like they get they somehow get licenses to use this um uh, western music for the show and I'm like I wish more anime did this you know it doesn't they don't need to but like you know just so that j- just just to spite the 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 pure weaves that think Japanese music is all that I was like no it's not it's not have you heard roundabout and I'm not talking about just the first few no 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 boom like the entire song that's a freaking seven minute song with a guitar solo piano solo yeah. drum solo oh my god I mean, I'm pretty sure some people have already <laughs> heard roundabout speci- uh, specifically from rock band no I, that song got big when Jojo came I know it got and, big and, when and Jojo came meeting. around but people that played rock band I know, I, I I could have sworn I saw it there, but it it is there, the song. Damn, damn, wish I could confirm that, but I, but I wouldn't even be aware of the song in any of the rock band games. Yeah. Oh. Uh, we play guitar. Oh. Well, like a true yeah, man. Yeah, like a true man. Anyways, <laughs> and with well, and with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're gonna we're gonna stop there. It's, so much of Jojo we have not we have not covered, and if and again I repeat we could talk about this for hours on end, but we're going to close it now because officially Jack we just made our longest episode ever. Yep, almost, so far almost two hours. <laughs> almost two hours. I'm gonna have so much fun editing this one. <laughs> regard, regard, regardless, I. Th- because it's JoJo, I'm okay with it. <laughs> it deserves the almost two-hour treatment we gave it, and with that, f- and with that, folks, we thank you for listening to listening to the Hat Jack Show. 
Please leave a like, please comment, and please subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell to be notified of future videos. We haven't stopped uploading stuff. I was sick. I was sick last week, and I couldn't even do a review. But we're getting back on track to make a, to make our weekly videos again. And of course, please. Sh uh, please share this video with your f with your friends or in your social media. Spread the word out about the Hack Jack Show, so that we can grow our pod grow our podcast, grow our channel, and be entertaining for all of you for all of you to enjoy. And with all that said, this is Hack signing off. Bye guys.